one tournament that you want to win? Uh, I've done it all. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yep, can't deny that. Many tennis fans already know what the Serbian has done in the sport, but just how great is Novak Djokovic really? There's only one way to find out. More than three decades ago, a four-year-old Novak was handed his first racket, and that could very well be the best gift he has received in his life. Even at that point, you could argue that he was born to play the game. But that's the case with a couple of other players, so what's so special about Novak? I'll tell you. In the mid to late 2000s, most tennis fans already had Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal as their favourite tennis players for good reason. They were the best two players in the world. But then a disruptor came. Novak spoiled the party and some fans were unforgiving afterward. He didn't even help matters with what some people called questionable sportsmanship at the time. At first, he was more of a nuisance, but it didn't take long before he established himself as a rival and even their nemesis on occasion. Slowly, he began to change the narrative. The big two had become the big three. It was tough on the Fidel fans, but exciting for the neutrals. But Novak was just getting started. A period of dominance came in 2011, where he defeated Rafael Nadal in seven consecutive finals. Before the Spaniard had the clay court season to thank. Things were a bit better for Federer, who suffered four defeats to the Serbian, but for the rest of the tour, a new king had finally emerged and Novak would go on to rule the decade, dominate all his significant rivals and achieve what they couldn't do, like holding all four slams at once between 2015 and 2016. The young, unassuming player who once did hilarious impressions of other players now meant business. There was no messing around anymore. Entering the tens with just one slam win, he added 15 more to his tally. And then another decade came and Novak carried on with the slams, racking up another five to take his tally to 21. As of the time of this recording, but greatness is not all about the big title, some would say. So why don't we talk about greatness as a measure of the adversities that you have to overcome on your way to the top? Djokovic grew up during two wars. For more than two and a half months, he spent hours upon hours every day in shelters during the bombings of Belgrade. At an early age, Novak had already become tough and all he had was big dreams to keep him going. It was during that period of hardship that sports became an integral part of, integral part of my life. Challenging his biggest rivals wasn't easy either, more so with the fact that he knew he would never get the same love or endearment that his rivals got. But Novak didn't care. He only knew how to do one thing, win. Challenges came along the way, like in the 2010 season, when he always felt tired and struggled with respiratory issues during matches. Allergies to dairy and gluten were identified, and he essentially needed to revamp his diet and cut out refined sugar, red meat, and less than a year later, the difference was clear. Another area where he had to overcome difficulties was in the mental aspect of the game. I obviously try to play the match in my mind before I go on the court. Uh, and uh... Although he had become tougher mentally, he buckled under pressure on occasions, especially in the 2012-2013 seasons where he lost five out of the six slam finals. Again, he reinvented himself in a rather unorthodox way. Djokovic explained that meditation, mindfulness, conscious breathing and a couple of other practices reinvigorated his career. But the point isn't about what Djokovic does, rather it is about finding a winning formula and that is what he has been able to do throughout his career. One of the traits of greatness. Having played against the crowd for most part of his career, the Serbian experienced recent hurdles getting disqualified at the 2020 US Open before getting banned last year due to his unwillingness to get jabbed. Uh, the freedom to choose you know, whether you want to get vaccinated or not. He was seen as this bad guy. Again, he showed he was made of pig iron and steel by sticking to his guns and damning the consequences. Through sheer hard work, discipline and mental resilience, Djokovic has established himself as one of the greatest players to ever hold the racket. But the Serbian is still hungry and he wants more. Now we are three, four years into the new decade, and here is what Djokovic had to say about the next-gen players trying to dethrone him. Uh, I will not give up. I will make sure I kick their butt for as long as I possibly can. Right, no doubt. Djokovic is trying hard to end the long-standing debate on who the greatest tennis player is between him and Rafael Nadal and Roger Federer. One way to do that will be to surpass the pair in as many ways as possible, and that appears to be what Novak is doing. He is heading towards uncharted territory, 
He is consolidating his greatness, and with the way he's taking care of his body at the moment, his longevity at the top looks more certain than ever. But how did we almost forget to talk about his game? Djokovic has arguably the most complete game we've seen in a while. The lean 6 foot 2 machine does everything right. The forehands, backhands, down the lines, serves, smashes, volleys, net approaches. Which is why he is impenetrable. Remember what Andy Roddick said about him? First he takes your legs, then he takes your soul. Of course, soul meaning everything you have left to offer in a match against him. By default, Djokovic is an aggressive baseline player like most other players, but here is the interesting thing. His ground strokes from both wings are ridiculously consistent and penetrating. He is easily the best returner of serves too, and perhaps that's his biggest strength. He leads the circuit on career percentage of return points and games won, and how does he do it? Maintaining a very wide stance primes his lower body for an explosive movement when the ball comes. Oh my word! He follows the stance up with a short but precise hop as he anticipates a serve when returning. He hits the ball to strategic places on the court to neutralize the opponent's advantage. Novak's ability to analyze his opponent's game and react appropriately remains one of the biggest factors in his success story. What about clutch performance? He continues to lead the tour in Korea under pressure rating. Let me remind you what that means. It is the sum of the percentage of break points converted or saved, tie breaks won, and the percentage of deciding sets won. In four words, it is having nerves of steel. Again, the 35-year-old continues to win when it matters most. On the physical side, he ticks all the boxes too. Core coverage, mobility, flexibility, goodness me, how's Novak so elastic? He makes you hit the ball one more time and works so hard just to win a point. What have all these qualities gotten him so far? Not too much really, just 373 weeks at the top of the ranking, a non-calendar Grand Slam, 21 Grand Slams and counting, six year-end championship finals, winning all nine Masters 1000 tournaments twice, and almost a century of ATP titles. Wait, we have to stop here if we don't want to wear ourselves out with his list of achievements. Greatness also means being able to inspire other people with your story. Apart from inspiring the younger players on the circuit, keeping it together with his family, and already nurturing a son that is taking after him, Djokovic runs a foundation. He started the foundation back in 2007 during the early days of his career. Since then, the foundation has built 50 schools and supported more than 20,000 children and over a thousand families. He has participated in charity matches, donated his prize money, Last year, the Serbian and his wife won a Humanitarians of the Decade Award for their efforts in helping the less privileged. Novak shares some of his inspirational acts with his millions of fans on social media. Also, let's not forget when Djokovic was the ATP Player Council Chief, he showed how thoughtful he could be by proposing a model for the top players to contribute some funds to help the lower ranked players out financially. Some fans, players, coaches and legends have described Novak Djokovic as the greatest player that the sport has ever seen. I never said this to anybody, but I'll say it right now, for me you are the greatest uh, tennis player in the history. But we can't just take their words for it, so let's consider the numbers. If we go by stats, it'll be hard to argue against Novak. He has beaten more top players than anyone else and has arguably dominated one of the strongest, if not the strongest eras of tennis. He also holds the open era record for the highest career winning percentage at 83.4% for players with over 500 wins. Maybe some fans will point towards the fact that Rafael Nadal still has one more slam than Novak as at the time of this recording, but Djokovic has set so many records that won't be going away anytime soon. What else do we have? The Serbian is excellent on all surfaces, hard courts, grass, clay. Even on clay, he probably comes only behind the king of clay, Rafael Nadal, and he's still one of only two players to beat Rafael Nadal at the French Open. The Serbian has a complete game and has even been labelled by legendary coach Nick Boliateri as the most perfect player of all time. Djokovic's legacy is such that even if you do not love him, you have to respect him for all that he has achieved in the sport and outside of it. How great is Novak Djokovic again? Here's what I think. Novak Djokovic is great enough to be considered the greatest tennis player of all time. I understand that that claim may still be arguable, but a retrospective look at the end of his illustrious career might confirm this narrative. Of course, I might be wrong. 
but having overcome early life challenges, he competed with the other two greats and has had the overall edge. And with Federer retired and Nadal inconsistent due to injuries, Djokovic remains as the old guard, preventing the big three from being dethroned. His game is well put together and his experience continues to bail him out even when he's playing badly. How many times have we seen him grind out wins against top tier players when injured or without having to leave second gear? Not only is Novak Djokovic arguably the greatest, but he also remains in the best position to claim the undisputed title and no other story is more befitting for the player, the man and the legend. How great do you think Novak Djokovic is? A penny for your thoughts. Interestingly, some tennis legends have a couple of confessions about another goat in this next video.